Hey, what's poppin' guys? Sizzle here, and today I'm doing a Pokemon Generation 1 review. So that means Pokemon Red, Blue, Green, and Yellow. And for the sake of this review, I replayed Pokemon Yellow on the 3DS Virtual Console, but I have played through each of the Gen 1 games in the past, including playing Pokemon Red on the original hardware. So I do have a little bit of experience playing through on original hardware, uh, so if that's what you're looking for, I also have that. Now before I start this review, I want to make one thing very clear, and that's that I'm going over how this game plays now, and not how it was when it came out. Because when this game came out, it was a masterpiece, uh, to put it shortly. It was one of very few RPGs, probably with the best concept in my opinion. It was one of very few handheld games, and the fact that they got this running on the Game Boy is also just insane to think about. Uh, it was one of very few games with multiplayer, and it was one of like two games with cross-console multiplayer, meaning you could play between multiple consoles and you didn't both have to be using the same console. And just generally, it's just a really well-made game, especially for its era. Now with that out of the way, let's go down to the actual review. Now first things first, we have the general game concept. Uh, it's kind of the core of every game, and for this game, it's a very good one. The concept of this game, obviously, if you don't know, is to capture every single type of species of Pokémon available in the game, and to train them up and then battle friends and NPCs just as much as you really want to. This is obviously a very solid concept, and it's why this series kind of stays around to today, so I'm not really going to go into it too much, and I'm just going to go over kind of the core mechanics that make up this concept. So, first things first, we have the battles. Now, don't get me wrong, the battling in this game isn't bad, it just isn't good. In modern games, Every kind of battle that you're doing in any kind of game has a bunch of different intricate things going on, and that's what normally makes it fun, is having all these different elements that you're thinking about and kind of working around. In Generation 1, there really wasn't much going on. Every Pokémon had its typing, and it also had an attack and defense stat, but its special stats weren't even split, so both special defense and attack were one stat. And on top of that, there's just nothing extra. Uh, in future Pokémon games, every single Pokémon has an ability, there's weather, there's terrains, there's a lot of different other things. In this game, it is literally, you attack, it does damage, there is some basic typing. Most Pokémon, though, only have a single type, or just very primitive typing. And a lot of the statuses are kind of just unbalanced or really stupid. For example, there's like Bind or Constrict, I forgot the exact name, but whenever you use the move, it just basically stalls out the battle. So what it does is it'll do like 6 damage uh, every time it attacks, but what it'll then do is it'll do 6 damage for 10 turns, except during those like 10 turns or whatever, you won't be able to do any other kind of move, and your opponent can't attack you at all. So basically it does 60 damage, but for some reason it just does the animation 10 times and you just have to sit there for like a full minute to watch someone do the same damage that a normal move would do. This can also be problematic if your opponent outspeeds you because you just have to kind of watch them do their thing and just hope they miss it the next time or else you're stuck in an infinite loop where you're not allowed to attack them at all. Uh, what's even worse is the one of the only mechanics this game has, the typing, is also incredibly imbalanced. Uh, most typings are kind of work normally, have like some weaknesses, some strengths, but for whatever reason, psychic types have zero weaknesses and a pretty hefty amount of strengths to them. What makes this even worse is what I mentioned haphazardly before, where there's no split of the special stats, so special attack and defense use the same statistic. And this is really bad uh, for just a lot of reasons. So main, the main one though, is that Pokemon that were supposed to be glass cannon, such as Alakazam, whose whole concept is that he has a super high special attack and speed, but basically zero defense and pretty much gets one shot by everything else. Well, in Generation 1, since there's no split of the special stat, his super high special stat became a super high special defense, and he was also a psychic type, which means he had no weaknesses. This is made even worse by the best Pokemon in the game, being Mewtwo, who is also a Psychic type. Although the special split doesn't really affect Mewtwo himself, but just the no weaknesses thing really does. 
and the fact that the special split works the way it does just makes psychic type stupidly overpowered in generation one so if you want to have kind of like a fair fight against the npcs just make sure you don't use any of them uh, i actually for a good portion of my playthrough was using cadabra uh, which is actually the second evolution not even the final one so i was using the slightly less broken one uh, with just a good amount worse stats, and even then, this thing was untouchable because it had no weaknesses. And it had a pretty solid special attack and defense, so it wasn't taking a lot of damage, it was dishing out a ton of damage, it was basically just untouchable for the time I was using it. So, that's really all I have to say about the battling system, it's very primitive, you just have your basic attacks, uh, attacks don't even have their own physical or special attacking stat, they're actually based on the type of move that you're using. So like, for example, all fighting type moves, even the ones that seem like they should be special moves, which I don't think there was any of those in Generation 1, but it's just the first thing I thought off the top of my head. Every single fighting move is a physical move, which means even if a move should have been special, it would still attack physically, which just made this even more both simple and complex. It, it was just a whole mess. Uh, basically, you just attack, you do very basic damage. Sometimes, depending on the Pokemon involved, there'll be weaknesses and strengths, but most of the time you're going to be completely neutral, and it's basically a game of just being a higher level or not, and the higher level Pokemon with a little bit more health and attack will normally just win, uh, unlike other Pokemon games where most of the time it really depends on the type matchups and you really want to work around the typing of your opponent's Pokemon, and that's where half the fun of battling even comes from, so not really having that most of the time kind of ruined a lot of Generation 1 for me. And that's not the only kind of problem they had due to technical limitations. This game actually has a surprisingly large map with a good amount of lore to it. If you talk to all the different NPCs, you'll find out a lot of stuff about the region and a lot of stuff outside the region and just a lot of stuff about Pokemon in general. Talking to all the NPCs and Pokemon I think should be a requirement for anyone doing their first playthrough because there's just so much you can learn and it's all very interesting and kind of gets you invested into the game. However, when I replayed the game recently, since I've seen the story so many times and already kind of know what it has to offer, I'm going to try not to spoil it here in this review, but it's a pretty solid story, especially for Pokemon. But because of that, I didn't really read a lot of the text again. So, when I was actually playing through the game, I got pretty lost. So, most of Pokemon games, even modern ones, are just super linear. You can kind of just follow the path that's blatantly laid out for you, and you'll just get to the end of the game, eventually, uh, after losing some battles or winning every battle. But in Generation 1, for whatever reason, at some point in the game, you have to get to this one city that's defended by a bunch of different guards. And every single one of the guards on all four sides of the city will tell you that they're thirsty. Uh, whenever they were saying they were thirsty, I kind of knew they wanted a drink, but I didn't know where to get it. And I looked around for hours. I talked to like every NPC in all the main areas, just did a bunch of different things, tried using a bunch of underground passages that are all over the place, and just everything I could think of to try and get into that city. I even ended up sequence breaking the game, beating the gym after that city, then coming all the way back, and I still had no way to get into that city, despite having literally beaten the next one. And then eventually I just kind of gave up and looked up on an online guide. And it turns out, what you had to do was go to the highest level of the department store, and there's this like little one block texture of a vending machine and you're supposed to know to go there and get any of the drinks from there and just hand one of those to the guards, which is super unintuitive considering that there's nothing in the main story that made you really need to go to that apartment store. I mean, I guess that's a kind of a nice way to force people to go there, but that would only make sense if you knew that it existed, which... Nothing really suggested that an essential item for the game would be there, so you just kind of had to randomly go up there, which, you know, if you're talking to every NPC, you probably would've, but if you're just playing the game and not really thinking too hard about the story, that's a really big problem in my eyes. And on top of that, there's just a lot of other technical limitations. For example, your bag, which holds all your items, can only hold like 20 items total, 20 different types of items. And this is a really big problem when you figure out the fact that you can't throw away key items, so items you use like one time for just a story-related event will stay in your bag forever and there's nothing you can do about it. 
So effectively, for about half the game, I had maybe three slots left for personal items. I had to throw away any TMs I came across, which if you didn't know, are moves you can basically teach any of your Pokémon. Uh, I had to throw away just any extra items I came across, because I had, like, no space in my bag the entire game if I wanted to keep having Pokeballs and potions in my bag. And I do, because you want to use those to catch Pokémon, which is the core of the game, and to heal during battles, which is the other half of the game. So that's a really big problem that was very annoying through my whole playthrough. The fact that in Generation 1 that you could carry around, like, a whole fossil and, like, 900 Pokéballs, but you couldn't carry around, like, a Pokeball, a Great Ball, and an Ultra Ball, so basically just three different Pokeballs. Uh, just makes no sense, obviously, from a lore perspective. It was purely a technical limitation, and it was very annoying and very noticeable through my playthrough. So if you're going through the game, uh, good luck dealing with that. I don't even know what you're supposed to do to kind of get around that. I couldn't find anything during my playthrough. Uh, and I basically ended up throwing away basically everything I came across that wasn't essential to the story, which kind of sucked. And finally, there's just a bunch lacking about the UI. For example, when you look at your party of Pokémon, rather than seeing a bunch of different sprites for each of the Pokémon, you'll see one kind of sprite for the type of Pokémon it is. So if you have like five different Pokémon that are kind of the same quote-unquote type, so it's like, I think the types are ground, sea, and like bird. If you have like five Pokemon that are ground based and you try looking at your party, you better remember what name you gave each of those Pokemon because otherwise you're going to have a very annoying time looking through their individual summary screens to figure out which one it is. And this is made even worse by the fact that the PC, which is where you store the extra Pokemon that you can't put in your party, since there's a max of six Pokemon per your party, the PC has no graphical interface at all. It's basically just a wall of text, and you have to just randomly kind of pick your Pokemon out of the box without being able to see what it even is, because it just uses like a global sprite that basically every Pokemon uses. That being said, despite all these technical limitations and all the simplicity of this game, I'd still say it's a pretty solid game if you can find it for cheap. So if you can find this game for under like $15 since it's an older game, or just buy it on the eShop, I think it was like 5 or $8 or something, the 3DS, and you've never played through Generation 1 before or any of its remakes, I'd say it's still kind of a decent game. Uh, it's definitely very limited, there's a lot of very, very clear technical limitations, and the battling is pretty primitive, especially in comparison to later games, but it's still a very fun game with a pretty intricate story and a surprisingly large map to explore. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I'll see you in the next one.